Hi, welcome to my video on um, the uh, electrification of my Vladimir Models um, Supra. It's a um, 3.8 meter um, high performance F5J glider. Um, I bought this second hand and uh, I'm now going to convert this to, um, well it was a glider and I'm now going to convert to electric um, the slopes that I fly on um, were allowed to use electric power as a safety assist, not flying but safety assist. So I'm going to make it uh, the best of both worlds. I can fly it on my um, flat field site and I'll be able to take up onto the slope as well and slope it without the motor uh, youth unless there's an emergency. So uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, here you can see the uh, Supra, as I say, it's uh, at this stage it's in its glider form. Um, most of the video will be um, focused on uh, the fuselage because the wings will be the same, even if it's now glider, it'll be the same for the uh, power version. What you can see then inside is because it was the glider version the servo positions now I'll have to uh, alter those because uh, in this bay I need to install a motor and have a lipo and my ESC so this tray will need removing uh, and reseating as you come back you can see there there's the uh, ballast tubes and then um, nut for uh, bolt for holding it in position wings bolt onto there and we go down the fuselage tailplane there and the rudder goes around but we'll go through that later in the video okay as you'll now see uh, i have removed the uh, servo tray i'm hoping to be able to leave these brackets in and just move the tray backwards so that the first servo will be underneath the uh, ballast tube I think that'll be possible because there's the uh, tray it's quite uh, a nice neat uh, application I don't know if this is the previous owner's um, way of doing it or it came with the model I can suspect it's Vladimir models that have done it but uh, forgive me uh, Derek if not um, so yeah that's that out and hopefully easy to reuse nice servos that came in it good strong servos so, let's get the thrust line start sorted now okay the step that I've just done now is I've uh, put the motor in as far as it'll go um, not too tight of course but uh, pushed it in and I've marked on the inside you may not be able to see actually there but I've with a marker pen the rough position of where the um, motor wires will be so this is more or less in line I don't know if you can see here is a, an aerial uh, hole which is there so and now i've marked it's actually the one on the left that i'm going to aim for and then what i've done is take the motor out so it's just a push fit the camera moving around but and what i've done is again just put the tips of the wire on the mark and then mark the front point of the motor as I move there you can see so that's roughly where my cut will be I'll probably come a little bit to the uh, left of that just to so I've got room for uh, one or two adjustments of the, for the motor what I'll do as well is um, if you look at the fuselage it's quite narrow but it's also quite thick that way obviously the uh, motor mount the motor is round so what I was planning to do is make my cut I'll end up with an oval shape in the fuselage 
and then I'm going to start to gently warm the front of the fuselage up and try then to make it a little bit more cylindrical so that the motor mount fits perfectly. If I'm giving myself a little bit more room here, there's room then just, uh, I don't know how the fuselage will be when it starts to go round and it may open up more, may close more, so, but I'm going to give myself plenty of room from probably the just 5mm left of that mark uh, and just keep trial fitting, trial fitting. Okay, for the uh, cut line what I've actually done is uh, pushed against the uh, shed wall it's a bit difficult with the phone here, but pushed it against the shed uh, edge like this measured six millimeters uh, six centimeters back and just kept rotating the phone and uh, rotating the fuselage marking six millimeters this should have given me a uh, more or less square cut with the fuselage again we can just adjust this slightly by sanding different angles as we go I feel confident with this as opposed to my intention was to make a thrust line and make it 90 degrees to the thrust line but uh, achieving a thrust line uh, wasn't easy so I think this might be the best starting point let's say once I've cut the uh, nose of the fuse large I, uh, I can start to adjust things accordingly Again, I've come well in front of the mark that you can see. That's the actual measurement where I should be cutting. So I'm giving myself plenty of room for adjustment. Okay. Okay, what I've tried to do here is get the top of the wooden um, brace along um, the center line from the measurement down so the top of this is equal from that um, and as i'm following then this top line the motor is mounted a little bit uh, lower in the fuselage just because of the shape and what i'm trying to achieve and i'm not far off got a little bit of down thrusting as you can see now which i believe i'll want because of the thrust of the motor or the power of the motor um, the glider's going to want to climb anyway so let's move it a little bit just to see if we can see a bit better it's about till mil one mil of down thrust on there quite happy with uh, the achievement of that the uh, fit to the fuselage is quite good I'll just uh, take the wood off so we can have a better look but that's how I've got me um, thrust line anyway now you can see the uh, fit of the firewall I think that's just a little bit of it's fitting lovely button straight up I've just got a little bit of heat to put on it now to get it to uh, go to the shape uh, and have less stress on the fuselage, still got to squeeze it a little bit but uh, at that point I'm quite pleased really ok that's the uh, motor install complete it's uh, fitting nice we'll let the glue set overnight it's uh, also cross section looks really nice quite pleased we'll uh, do the test tomorrow see how the uh, thrust line goes um, confident it's uh, it's okay for the fuselage but uh, we'll see you tomorrow on the testing once the uh, glue's set properly. Okay, the uh, next step I've done is to uh, make up the wiring loom for the uh, motor speed controller, etc. It's uh, not turning out quite how I'd planned. It needs a 60 amp uh, 
speed controllers and it's a little bit too big to fit under the servo tray like I was wanting the plan was just to fit it uh, underneath uh, oops, underneath the tray there but I'm having to slide it right down and underneath the uh, ballast tube and way back into the fuselage I'll make a couple of breathe holes or something in the side just to get some air to go through um, I don't think there's enough coming from the uh, propeller um, so I'll uh, just say I'll have to put some cool vents around where the motor goes and uh, for the ESC okay this is uh, the uh, Supra fuselage finished um, you'll see like here I've got wire runs for the battery from the ESC which I've had to mount it's somewhere just back here uh, you can see the receiver here um, so it's just behind that so it'll be about there I couldn't get it in underneath the um, servos here like I wanted there's just not enough room between the servo bottoms and uh, so but anyway it's, it, it works fine like that it doesn't get hot I've got the uh, air scoops which hopefully you can see here um, and that seems to be keeping it cool I've got one on the other side as well there I've also put uh, the motors here I put four air scoops, one there, one there, there and there, just at the back edge of the motor, uh, and some smaller ones, which may be difficult to see, like here. I put six around all together. Um, so, again, it doesn't, uh, after I've run the motor for an extended period of time, it doesn't feel hot here. So, uh, the air scoops have worked well. Um, I've actually flown the model now, so uh, uh, I've run three flights through it or three lots of batteries. It's difficult to get the best batteries, an 800 milliamp three cell, which I just can squeeze in this way to the and sit it on the Velcro there. That gives me uh, four launches or four climbs to height so it's uh it's working quite well in the cg is uh, perfect position in the setup now that i've got uh, in a dive test the model um just picks up its nose up a little bit in the dive test so it's let me say probably a little bit light on the tail but uh, she flies superbly um You'll also see that I've got a bit of a gap between the spinner and the firewall, which will hopefully put some air through. There are holes in the firewall, which you may have seen earlier in the video. So again, you'll get air cooling air going down with that as well. The back of the fuselage, it's just a tube all the way down. So any air that's passing through the fuselage will uh, go out of the back end. It's, uh, But it's... Uh, very nice in the uh, climb out it's in the setup i've got it i've got it nearly right uh on its thrust lines it just slightly climbs um at full power it lifts its nose up a little bit um so it's but the power setup's lovely i can do a 50 degree climb out on full power and within seconds it's at the top of the climb at uh, I usually drop it out at the uh, around 300 feet so I'm really pleased with the setup and how it's gone so I've hope the video has been helpful to you um, any questions please leave it in the comments at the bottom and I'll come back to you and answer them but uh, I don't want to do any more tweaking to it. I'm very happy with the way it's gone. Um, and the setup's fine. And hopefully now I can get many hours of either slope soaring out of it or flat field flying. 
Our strip's not long enough for a bungee, so it did need the uh, motor set up on it, but uh, it's it's gone extremely well, and I'm really happy. Okay, then, thanks for watching. As I say, just leave any uh, comments if you like at the bottom, and I'll get back to you. And uh, don't forget to press the like button if you uh, like what you've seen. Thank you.